So I suggest uh, we start. Uh, so welcome today to the event session, uh, Supporting Educators and Education in COVID-19 Crisis, Eden Perspective. This session is part of the uh, ICD President's Forum 2020 as a satellite engagement event. And we are very happy that we could uh, contribute to ICD President Forum. My name is Sandra Kucina and I'm Eden President. And in uh, today's session, we will share uh, we will share our know-how uh, about uh, how uh, an organization, an association such as Eden, can support educators and education in time uh, of pandemic uh, when we have faced this crisis. The speakers today are Timothy Reed, Eden Vice President uh, for Open Professional Collaboration from UNED, uh, Spain, uh, Diana Andone, Eden Vice President for Communication and Communities of Practices from, from Politecnica University of Timoshoara, Romania. Elisa Mari Blaske, Chair of the Board of the Eden Fellows um, uh, Council. And uh, she's working at the Center of Lifelong Learning at Oldenburg, Germany. And Antonio uh, Teixeira, former Eden President from Universitate Aberta, Portugal. And before we start with uh, our session, I kindly ask the Secretariat to uh, share the uh, video message from the ICDE. Dear ICDE partners and colleagues, my name is Ture Nilsvik and I'm the Secretary General of International Council for Open and Distance Education, ICD. It is my pleasure to greet you through this video on the occasion of today's satellite engagement event for the ICDE President's Forum 2020. The ICD President's Forum will take place virtually on the 25th of November and will address the topic on how we can recalibrate educational leadership for resilient education. On the day, presidents and rectors of ICDE members will reflect upon educational challenges accentuated by the pandemic and discuss leadership actions and steps that must be taken towards a more resilient education system where open, flexible and distance education must play a greater role. The difference between flexible and distance education as a planned and pedagogically designed program or course to emergency remote education is crucial. During the crisis, we have seen that educators and societies that already had planned systems, proper infrastructure and flexible learning concepts in place were much better equipped in order to secure continuous learning than the ones that did not have these systems in place. At the same time, it has been clear that already existing inequalities related to lack of connectivity, social injustice and the digital divide has been accentuated during the crisis and that targeted measures must be taken. These and many other challenges will be discussed and addressed during the next ICDE President's Forum. Through our partners' satellite engagement events and other pre-forum activities, we have invited all ICD stakeholders and the whole global community of online, open and distance education to contribute and feed into the discussion. Check out the events page on icd.org that is populated with introductory videos, keynotes, vlogs and blog posts related to the topic. Through today's event, which you, as a valuable partner to ICDE, is invited to host, you now have the opportunity to contextualize and concretize the leadership challenges that are most relevant for your organization and stakeholders. How should educational leaders respond to the challenges addressed? How can we, as a global membership organization, facilitate for stronger collaboration and partnerships across borders and continents? Again, thank you for engaging in the discussion. I wish you a successful event.
So you have seen the uh, video from the ICDE. And let me start with uh, Eden. Uh, presenting Eden Association um, in a way that, uh, as Torun already says, how can we as a global uh, associations contribute to the situation we are facing today with the disruption of education and, and the society in global, uh, the biggest one in, in the history, and with the issues how to uh, enable educators uh, all over the uh, globe uh, and also uh, education to continue and to uh, respond to the challenges we have faced uh, this year. In our session, we will present uh, how Eden uh, responded to such uh, uh, to this crisis. How, what measures and steps did we take so far? Let me just remind you that Eden Association is almost 30 years old. And as we like to say, this is smart network for professional community and professional community for smart learning. And uh, our uh, idea and our aim is to contribute to education and educators by talking and tackling the most present and important topics relating to digital learning and teaching by bringing Eden community and all interested to discuss, to exchange ideas and know-how and providing ground, collab uh, ground for collaboration and joining of efforts to foster digital education and digital culture for better life and well-being in today's and tomorrow world. And my colleagues today with first, will first share uh, our activities which we have taken uh, in this year so far uh, and how we cope uh, with them and what was the feedback of the community uh, on them. And so uh, I will ask first team and Lisa to share our initiative, which with which we started uh, immediately after the crisis has begun and uh, to show our leadership and our strength as a community to support educators and education. So team and Lisa, I'm giving the floor to you now. Thank you very much, uh, Sandra. Okay, so we're going to talk about our Eden webinar initiatives, the, the two blocks, education in a time of pandemic and the, the subsequent uh, block on um, education in a time of new normal. Can you move on to the next slide, please? Now, Eden has a, a long history of, um, of giving our webinars and engaging with our, with our community. So we really uh, decided that this was a way we could uh, immediately contribute to uh, supporting uh, the teaching effort that was going from face-to-face -to, -face to emergency online uh, teaching to, to distance learning. And you can see the, uh, um, the, the team of, uh, of people who actually worked in this, uh, in this initiative because it was quite an intense uh, period. We had weekly meetings and uh, we brought in, uh, we tried to stay up to date with the, the feedback and information we were getting in, uh, in the preparation of these um, of these webinars, they typically lasted about uh, okay, that's fine, um, about uh, um, an hour, an hour and a bit, and you can see the the first block of uh, eleven uh, webinars. It started at uh, the end of March and went through to the, the beginning of uh, of, uh, of June. So, I mean, if we skim over these very quickly, we we were very fortunate to start in our first webinar with a, a wonderful presentation by by Tony Bates, helping people get their hands on there. In the second one, we were talking about the implications of this, of this new online environment for across the board, really, from academics, administrators, etc. And that was an interesting talk given by um, Eva, Eva Ossi and Neil Linson. The third um, webinar, it was um, our attempt to catch up on all the questions that we'd, were, we'd received during this period. And um, there was a, a very good Q&A session held by uh, Don Olcott Jr., Antonella Apothia, and Lisa Maria Blaschke. In the fourth um, webinar we really looked about uh, about design and uh, assessment for online uh, learning and that was a webinar in which Alfredo Soreda, Lisa Maria Blaschke and Orna Ferro um, participated. In the fifth webinar we were really looking at engagement, how to actually really relate to our students in an online in environment and the webinar was given by Alan Tate and Simon Paul Atkinson. In the sixth uh, webinar we looked at um, the nation the notion of uh, community and how to build it online and this was given by Steve Wheeler 
In the seventh, we looked at the, the question of uh, information overload and fake news. And it was a webinar given by Irving Katz and Francesca Amenduni. In the eighth webinar, we were looking at some practical tips for learning and instru instructional design, how to give uh, structure to the, the classes we try and uh, run online. And this was given by Joyce Sengenger, uh, Gerald Evans, and Jilly Salmon. In the ninth webinar, we were looking at um, open educational resources and practices. And this webinar was given by Martin Weller and Catherine Cronin. In the 10th uh, webinar, we were looking at how we can actually plan for education after the pandemic, what sorts of things we'd have to take into account and the like, types of problems we'd have to face. And this was a, a webinar given by Antonio Teixeira, Neil Fascini, and Pini Makoe. And finally, in the 11th uh, webinar, we were developing 21st century skills for teaching online in general. And this was a, a webinar given by Patiti um, Ire Chinga and Ulf Daniel Echers. Next slide, please. So then we had uh, the summer recess. We weren't really sure what was going to happen uh, afterwards, but when it was uh, clear that things were going to carry on uh, in a similar fashion at the uh, middle of September, we started again and we carried on with a series of, of six uh, uh, webinars. The first one, the first part, the first one was really divided into two, looking at this online transformation of universities and the sorts of challenges it would, uh, it would actually imply. So in the first uh, Part of the first half, we had a presentations by uh, Sir John Daniel and Antonio Teixeira. In the second uh, half, the presentations were by Mark Nichols, Christian Andres Schumann, and Alison Littlejohn. In the third webinar, we were looking at the next phase of online. How can we actually improve or carry on improving in, in the most cases? And we had presentations by Alexandra Mahay, Marthy Powell, and Richard J. Powers. In the fourth webinar. We we're once again looking at the idea of communities at this time in terms of how to support our, our teachers. And we had uh, presentations by Mahavali, Mia Samora and Autumn Kynes. In the fifth webinar, we were looking at the role of research and how we could use it to actually um, support and improve learning with technology. And we have presentations once again by the ever-present Antonio Teixeira, um, Josep Duart, Ulrich Bernath and Sandra Lucina Sofcik. In the sixth and final of this uh, series, um, we, we were lucky enough to have representatives from the uh, European Commission who were talking to us about the digital education plan 21 to 27 and setting the education and training for the digital age. And with us was George Dimitrov, Veronica Morilito, and Yves Prune. Can you move on to the next slide, please? Okay, how did we actually do this? So we had a weekly meeting, we prepared the, uh, the topic, we got our speakers together, we set up a web page, and we had the event. Um, we enabled people to participate with us within Zoom, but at the same time, we had a, a real-time transmission on YouTube. And there was always one of us picking up the questions in Zoom and somebody else in um, in YouTube. And once the event was over, we left a recording and also the presentations that which were there for people to uh, go back. And you can still go back and, and watch those. And uh, I encourage you to do so if you haven't done so far. Sandra, next slide, please. Okay, webinar philosophy. One thing we didn't want to do was get carried away with the, the theory and uh, philosophical reflections on the nature of online learning and, and distance education. We tried to be as far as possible hands-on, although to some extent reacting to the types of questions that were being asked, we adapted as we, we went along. And really at the same time, trying to create synergies right across the uh, our organizations because if there's one particular feature of online teaching and learning that's important is that it's a team game and we all need to be pulling in the, in the same direction. We also try to reach out to new players and uh, um, people who may not have participated in our webinars previously to bring their valuable experience and interesting perspective to um, the distance educational field. And also begin to sketch out what we might think the, uh, this idea of new normal might actually be, which I think we're still discovering now at the moment. Sandra, next slide, please. How do we decide on the topics? Well, I think I've given some insight into that already. And um, also we tried to make use of the results we picked up from the feedback and also the, uh, the demand that we were picking up in the, in the, in the weekly meetings. So without um, more ado, on the next slide, I'll pass over to my colleague, Lisa, to carry on, please. Thank you, Tim. I'm just gonna present to you the results that we got from the, um, uh, from the, uh, from the webinar series that we held. And, and there's a lot of data here, but I'd like you to most specifically look at the, uh, the, the totals that are at the bottom. Um, this is from the first webinar series that we held, Education in Time of a Pandemic. 
Uh, we had overall uh, 6,263 registrations. Um, and then uh, we had a total of 3,552 participants and we issued 52 contributor badges and 2,028 participant badges. Uh, and so uh, altogether, since that time, we've had nearly 12,000 views uh, of the webinars uh, since holding the webinar series uh, this spring. Next slide, please. One of the things that we looked at for this particular webinar series were the number of participants by country. Uh, Croatia ranked number one in terms of participants, then came Germany, Portugal, Romania, Italy, the UK, Spain, Latvia, Ireland, and, uh, and so on. And so there were there were quite there was quite a diverse number of participants, and most of these are from the from the European Union. However, we did have a number of participants from around the world: Canada, from the United States, uh, from the Philippines, South Africa. So we really were able to read, reach a, a wide, wide, wide uh, breadth of uh, of people. Next. This gives you an idea of where our participants are from. I wanted to include this so that you could see we, we hit just about every country there was in terms of participants. So it really did, we were able to reach out and to, and to really support um, people and, and to meet the need and the demand that was out there for information uh, about how to uh, survive this initial transition into online. Next. Here's some of the results. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, there were uh, the top five countries with participants. There were, we were visited by over 120 countries worldwide. And then here's, here's the top, top five. Uh, the topics that were in the greatest in demand, uh, the first was the moving online, which was our very first webinar, which was with Tony Bates trying to get, um, what, are the, what are the things that participants needed to be aware of as they transition into the online environment? Uh, the next was designing and managing assessments, then practical tips for learning and instructional design. And then what, what, would, the, what would this mean, this transition for students, academics, and administrators? And then how to engage and support students online. And you can see from the topics that, that these weren't really um, investigations into research or into theory, but they really were hands-on. What do people need right at that moment? in order to successfully uh, survive within, uh, within this new environment. Next slide. There, what, some other results that we had, there was a really high number for badges. We, we, aren't, we aren't sure whether it was because people wanted to have recognition that they attended, or they wanted to show that they'd acquired a specific set of skills uh, that they could then show to their, to their employer uh, about moving into the online environment. But it was very clear that there was demand for that recognition, uh, and speci specifically in the areas of assessment, information management, and what it would mean to moving online. We did notice that th there was a decrease of participants over time, uh, and this is you know, completely normal because they were moving from an emergency phase into a more uh, streamlined phase of moving into the online environment. Uh, topics uh, were not as much in demand, and uh, it could also be that participants just didn't have the time uh, in order to attend. We did notice that, that there were more views of the recordings than there were actually live participants, and this is a good sign because it shows that there was still demand, there was still need for these topics and for these webinars. Next. Now the next webinar series that we gave was after the Eden Conference, and here we wanted to focus on uh, really education in this phase of new normal. And so um, these are the topics that we looked at. Uh, we had um, uh, 1800, or 1,688 registrations, uh, and then we had 923 participants. Uh, issued over 700 badges, and there have been uh, close to 2,000 views since we have uh, started uh, this particular webinar series. Next slide. As with the previous seminar, we looked at how many participants that we had, how many speakers, uh, and then how many how many Zoom and YouTube participants. And here we had 89 countries that participated. And these are countries from, from Europe as well as non-European countries. And so that's what we did. And those are our results. And now I'll hand it back to, uh, to Sandra. Uh, thank you, Tim and Lisa. Uh, I think that uh, this shows that uh, at the moment when it was needed, Eden showed that 
uh, it can offer a variety of topics which were a demand at that moment, but also that it can gather the community to share expertise and know-how. And this was, I would say, our biggest uh, challenge at that moment to get around and to, to communicate and collaborate and to organize such session. Um, next, we will share with you um, the challenges we have faced uh, in this year as well. Um, these were uh, that we planned uh, our biggest meeting, annual conference. It's always face-to-face -face and it's time to meet, to greet, to collaborate, to, to meet friends and so on. And we had to do it fully online. So now I'm going to give uh, 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 time to Diana to, to as a host of the Eden uh, annual conference uh, this year to share how, uh, which challenges did we face in organizing uh, the conference fully online for the first time. Thank you, Sandra. So indeed, uh, we picked up uh, directly from uh, the webinars and we tried to move that experience which we gained during the online webinars. Running 11 uh, webinars was quite a challenge for the whole team of Eden and also uh, spread even wider the Eden community. So we had decided quite early, it means in April, that the Eden Conference annual conference is going to be fully online. And that means quite an intense preparation of being sure that we can also support it technically, but also uh, instructionally. So we will really give back something to the community. The theme of the conference was picked up before the, obviously before the COVID era, so we've been focusing more on human uh, intelligence and artificial intelligence and our involvement into the STEM, into the science, technology, engineering, and math education. We adapted this with digital education. And the image which you can see here is the image coming from uh, the end of the conference, from the closing, conf from the closing session, where we were all happy <laughs> because uh, we consider also based on the feedback which we received uh, live afterwards and also during the feedback survey that it was quite a successful conference and well appreciated by the education community which participated into it. I need to say that it was a joint team effort also from the Politecnica University of Timshara, which was officially hosted uh, the, the conference. The Eden Secretariat and the Eden leaders, the Eden Vice President. And we used also quite a lot of other Eden community as uh, technical chairs, as chairs of the sessions. Uh, and we needed to train quite a lot of people on how to use a virtual conference because this was quite early for a lot of us. We were not really being part in uh, too many conferences. So that was the biggest challenge beside of the technical one to be sure that all of us, we have similar competencies to be able to run a conference with uh, multiple participants from all the four continents and with uh, four or even five sessions uh, simultaneously. Next, please. Because uh, the community pulled on together, we had more than 300 delegates coming from 40 countries, covering all the areas of expertise from education technologies, from higher education, but also from the uh, K-12 or the pre-university education system, and quite a lot coming from companies and from the general public. So this was very welcome by us. As you can see, we've been mainly European, but also uh, spread out around the world, and quite a lot of people followed the sessions online because the plenary sessions were live broadcast also on YouTube, not only inside in Zoom and into the virtual conference. The plenary sessions which we planned was had a very large breadth of uh, views coming uh, from uh, digital education because we were lucky to have the first introduction from the European Commission of the new digital education action plan. We were also lucky to be able to have the learning analytics teams uh, being presented uh, quite powerfully with two presentations coming from uh, this subject, but also the artificial intelligence and the use of the artificial intelligence in a wider spread of our lives, but also quite focusing on the use uh, of artificial intelligence with chatbots and so on into the education. We also introduce assessments uh, and how assessment will be done into the plenary sessions and open educational technology uh, with uh, the use of the new technologies which are supporting uh, 
education nowadays, and the micro-credentials, which were also run through a special workshop. We also, you can see that the keynote speaker were coming from Australia to United States, uh, going through Europe. So again, Eden was proven that it's a global association which can uh, lead and gain also from the knowledge which is uh, uh, globally uh, provoked. Next slide, please. And uh, we had several papers. Uh, we had uh, 44 paper presentation, 12 workshops and training sessions, 14 posters and demonstration, all included into special sessions uh, and uh, other support uh, which uh, we gave uh, during the conference. And I need to say that we continue the, how to say, the custom which was in Eden in the last two years to have also a PhD symposium during the annual conference as well as, as it was during the research workshop which followed. So we managed quite well to bring the young researchers into the Eden community and to have very valuable uh, mentoring and also uh, feedback and information to our young researchers. We were lucky because uh, with the Polytechnica University team, we managed to put up uh, a virtual conference tool when this was not possible. Um, I know virtual conference tool was ready uh, in June to be used uh, either commercially or in other format. This virtual conference tool also allowed everyone to upload their papers, their presentation, and it was seen as a main network uh, hub, as a nexus of information and communication among the participants, and also included the links to the live sessions uh, for everyone uh, to be uh, accessible and usable. And it was quite uh, well valued by the participants. Next slide. But as uh, Sandra also said, uh, a conference is also a time when it's not only knowledge and information and projects uh, to be shared, but also friendship to be shared. And this was the most challenging bit, which we tried to somehow to, to present, uh, as we had also some social cafes, some networking sessions. In all the uh, breaks, we had the uh, open sessions where people will join and just chat and, and network. There were forums where people shared information and projects and established meetings. And we also try to put up together a social program, somehow to bring the community to Timisoara, to Romania. Also virtually with a virtual tour, which we done live into the city and with a virtual dinner with food and, and wine from Romania. Unfortunately, only to be tasted by the Romanians uh, for the moment. And uh, also with quite an interesting uh, session of bringing uh, local activities and regional activities in, in STEM education. So things from which we can all uh, learn and, and share. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Diana. So you can see that it was definitely a challenge for us to go fully online. And I would say that it was very successful uh, a challenge taken, uh, that results were really great. And based on uh, so good experience with uh, having online conference uh, and the really uh, uh, high response of participants uh, uh, and uh, collaboration, uh, we, um, we decided to have the research workshop online as well. Uh, the research is very important part of Eden activities. Uh, as Diana mentioned, we, had, we have this PhD symposium initiative but uh, every second year we have uh, Eden Research Workshop and um, this year the research workshop was in Lisbon virtually uh, hosted by Universitate Alberta and our host was uh, Antonio Teixeira. So Antonio, please uh, tell us why do you think this research workshop was special? Not only because it was virtual, but uh, because uh, it also brought the results from on the present issues which we are still facing today. Well, thank you, Sandra. Uh, actually, actually uh, even this, this was the, the challenge. Uh, in fact, uh, when we started planning the event, similarly like uh, Diana has explained uh, for the annual conference, we were actually the, 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 the event started, we planned two years uh, in advance, so it was a long uh, preparation. And um, it's interesting that uh, uh, the insight we had on the topic uh, proved to be right, which is the, the first interesting conclusion. So our approach was actually, as, as the um, 
as the title um, in a way uh, represents, uh, we try to look at um, the experience of learning with technology from uh, well uh, from a human perspective. So of course, focusing on uh, on the use of technology, especially of course on the emergent trends, artificial intelligence and others, as uh, Diana has also noted, but um, trying to uh, in a way um, to also focus and in a way to um uh, actually to r bring back the human part of this experience it's interesting because that was possibly probably one of the major conclusions that people felt well researchers felt uh, from this uh, uh, experience of, uh, during the pandemic times so of course uh, this was the topic enhancing the human, the human experience of learning with technology new challenges for research in digital open distance and network education. And uh, we've um, following up on the explanation uh, that uh, uh, Sandra has already shared. We had this uh, issue, this discussion on whether to um, to keep the, the conference uh, or in the organization of the conference as it was um, scheduled or to uh, make some kind of adjustments or even to postpone it. And the decision was the right one in, in the sense that we had to redesign the event, uh, but um, on, uh, using some solutions that were slightly different from what we had tried in Diane, uh, in um, in the with the annual conference, so uh, as Diana has already noted, uh, one of the major uh, challenges has to do with um, uh, the balance between um, the um, the scientific component uh, of the of the of the event and the networking aspects of the event as well. So uh, differently from what has been tried uh, in the, with the annual conference, we tried to, um, stream, uh, to streamline in the sense to focus uh, the attention and focus the redesign of the program on the, the content part and to use social media to actually um, to account for the networking part in a sense. But this was combined also in a very um, uh, dynamic way. And what was also a good experience was the fact that given the, uh, the very high density of the program, uh, the, the, um, actually the experience was really intensive. And uh, this allowed for, uh, a, 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 well, also a, a very uh, a great atmosphere amongst the, the participants. So the first, um, probably one of very important uh, aspect to highlight was the fact that opposite to what we had um, feared, uh, the participation was much higher than expected. So this was most probably uh, the highest attended research workshop ever from uh, organized by Eden and the numbers are there to, to attest it. So we had over 200 participants from 43 different countries representing all regions of, of the world. We had um, close to 50 um, full paper presentations, also posters, uh, workshops, and all the PhD uh, symposium as well uh, with a high attendance. The keynote speakers, as you can see from the, from the left, uh, were very uh, well um, high. high <laughs> Uh, important uh, speakers, I mean, great experts from Alan, well, from Alan Tate, Tony Bates, Terry Anderson, uh, more, more established uh, keynote speakers and experts. Also, uh, Antonio Nova, which uh, brought a different kind of perspective from a more traditional approach to, to education. But it was really interesting how we combine it uh, with, with, um, with the research that is going on. And, and also uh, the contribution from Alan, uh, new res well, younger research in this sense, a uh, new generation of research uh, from represented by Alan Elsper or Mahabali uh, and uh, Mar Perez San Agustin, Cristina Costa uh, and Inesh. Uh, uh, and Martin Waller, of course. So in, in this sense, it was also interesting to note that we had already um, seen in the, the research workshop uh, and not just uh, uh, um, a combination of different generations that were conducting research uh, on, uh, on open and distance, uh, well, open distance and e-learning, but also a new generation that has uh, um, started to conduct research 
uh, as a result of the impact of the pandemic. And it has already been seen uh, in, in this workshop. So there is, um, um, and we can now go to the next slide, please. If you can. <laughs> so, okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, um, as Alan said, uh, well, very, uh, uh, as, as summed up in the end, in a very beautiful sentence, this workshop has been a triumph of resilience for the community in a, a number of ways. Uh, first of all, it was um, uh, it represented the fact that uh, given the impact of, of the pandemic, which also affected uh, all of the institutions, how we could uh, and, and also how we organized conferences. Uh, let, let remind us, as Diana has already noted, that uh, reorganizing a conference that has been planned for a physical uh, um, scenario uh, is, is quite difficult, quite hard, but this has, uh, has been done quite successfully. But apart from this, uh, there is a new sense of vitality from the Eton community that was clearly um, uh, shown, and also uh, an in, uh, a widening of this community as well. So uh, as a result of the, uh, of the impact of the pandemic, not only the field of practice has widened, but also the field of research. There are new researchers coming in, bringing new perspectives, uh, bringing new focus of attentions, and this has been uh, very interesting. So uh, the first conclusion I would, I would uh, draw from this is the, this one, right? There is a new generation of researchers that is coming to the field and bringing new perspectives. This has also been seen uh, in, uh, as the uh, one of the most important aspects, uh, one of the most important uh, highlights of the research workshops are usually the awards. The best, the best research paper award was uh, received by a young researcher, a very promising new one, and uh, also new uh, awards were given, which represents the vitality also of these uh, new uh, perspectives. Another aspect which is also important is that the researchers are exploring a wide array of topics both traditional and new, uh, new ones, as, as already noted, uh, but in a very holistic way. So this has been very um, clear also uh, in the program as well. Uh, Diana has already noted a number of, of topics, I will not repeat them, but um, from um, aspects linked with uh, inclusion and uh, the social impact of, uh, uh, of the use of technology in education to uh, how um, uh, institutions can be uh, changed. And so uh, uh, topics related with strategic planning and, and transformation, topics related with teacher uh, training and, and the capacity building, uh, topics related with assessment, which is clearly a very important uh, topic these days, also with accreditation, um, with the feedback and how students can be supported. All of these different kinds of aspects have been uh, um, uh, researched with a new vitality. Um, also new emerging topics as uh, the ethics and uh, the issues related, ethical aspects involved and issues related with uh, data management, with privacy and all of this. I would say that there is a, a very clear focus on the quality, the integrity, and the equity of the online learning process. This has been key, a key element in this uh, uh, research that is being conducted and has been presented uh, at the workshop. Finally, um, th there's a very uh, interesting aspect as well, which was noted by Maxim Jean-Louis at the end of the, uh, of the workshop, was one of the conclusions as well. Uh, is that we are living now in a time where evidence-based decisions and uh, access to quality data are critical for decision-making. And this has been uh, not only relevant in the case of, uh, uh, for instance, um, health-related issues, uh, but also in education. And so there is an, an understanding that is emerging the, uh, of, the, and the, uh, the, of the need uh, to base our decision-making on research. So research-based um, decision-making is critical and is more important than ever. And in this sense, uh, I could say that one of the biggest 
um, outcomes of this workshop has been not only, uh, of course, the vitality of the Eden community and the research community as a whole, but the, the clear understanding of the community itself, the community of researchers, that is being, that it's, it's activity, it's not only important for the sake of research, but to inform uh, decision making. And this sense of connection with uh, what actually is uh, the reality of the field and what, uh, and the changing process that is uh, being um, uh, conducted at the same time that we're researching it has uh, been also very uh, highlighted during the, this event. So in uh, just in a brief word, um, of course, this was an important uh, event um, for all the reasons that I've tried to show, but mainly uh, because it was, as Alan Tate has stated, a clear triumph of, triumph of the real resilience, but more than the resilience of the relevance of the Eden community and, and of course, uh, of the um, research and practice community in this field. Back to you, Sandra. Thank you, Antonio. Um, very, very nice, nicely said. And I think at, at this moment, uh, uh, in, in such situations that we are facing today, research is very important part because decisions should be done based on research, not just only uh, based on the impressions uh, and feelings, you know, although we do like to do that, uh, it, it works sometimes. Um, well, here, um, uh, here are uh, the, the, the events we have presented uh, so far. Uh, I will stop sharing my screen now, screen now uh, and I would like to invite you to ask uh, uh, questions uh, to panelists and, and me as well. Uh, why do you think uh, that uh, act our activities are good or can be better? Or do you think that uh, such associations as Eden could have done uh, some other uh, activities or some other initiatives in order to support educators and education? I see that, <coughs> sorry, I see that you have uh, had some uh, comments uh, in the chats already. Um, I, meanwhile, while you think ab about questions, I would like to ask uh, my speakers, my colleagues uh, uh, here with me, who are working uh, on Eden uh, as well, uh, uh, shaping the, the our activities uh, and our policies uh, which we are preparing. Um, in, in your opinion, uh, how did we do so far and did you miss anything uh, as as a, as a member, as an educator and the researcher, did you miss anything that would be very helpful to you uh, to help you uh, in organizing uh, your work and to be uh, uh, to feel as a part of uh, of the community? So maybe we could start with Tim uh, uh, here. Thank you, Sandra. Um, I don't really think I, I miss anything directly because it wasn't necessarily just the topics we 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 covered at the, the conference, the research workshop, and on, in our webinars. It was all the rich interaction with all the people there, the speakers and the uh, the people who are actually attending these events. And um, I really think we touched on to a, a greater or lesser um, extent most of the, the, the actual problems that we were really looking at. Because at the end of the, the day, this is a wonderful opportunity because we've been preaching for so many years about uh, you know how to play this online game. And all of a sudden, um, you know people are forced to do so. It's a great eat your own dog food. Uh, situation and um, I think we stepped up to the the mark uh, quite well and I think you can tell by the positive feedback we've had and, and the large number of people engaging with us and also it's not been like a ballistic process it hasn't been like a, sh a shell that fires out a cannonball fired out of a, um, a cannon that just moves straight we've incorporated people's feedback in as we've gone along so I'd like to think that we've uh, we've we've tried to adapt to people's needs. Uh, thank you, Tim. Yes, um, uh, Lisa, maybe to, to add uh, to you, uh, you are doing mostly online uh, as, as educators, so you are uh, accustomed to be only fully online all the time, you know. Uh, but uh, taking into this, um, do you think that uh, there is too much online at the moment or are we becoming Zoom zombies, as someone says? <laughs> Yeah, well, I know I'm becoming a Zoom zombie. I don't know how everyone else is feeling, but uh, it just feels like there's just a lot of 
um, there used to be a show in the United States. It was called Zoom, and it was Zoom, Zoom, Zooming around. And I, that's how I feel. I'm Zooming from one meeting to the next. And I think one of the things that, that and we did actually do a webinar about this through Eden, um, is really concentrating on our well-being and the well-being of our students and trying to support them as much as that we can. And for me, um, from my perspective, working within the Eden organization, it was such a positive experience bringing everyone together um, and really, really capitalizing on the experiences that we have had. I mean, there's so many people that think that, you know, that online just happened with this, with this transition, with this, with this big pivot. And uh, as a result of the pandemic, when in reality, we've had, you know, decades of experience that 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 we're now drawing from and we're not just drawing from it but we're sharing it with the community and that to me is such an exciting experience because um we're now able to really apply so many of the things that that we know uh, but but as i said well well-being is is really important so it's important to be able to close your computer when you need to <laughs> yeah I agree with you. Yes, um, Diana, uh, you have uh, been working with community all of the all this time uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, trying to help teachers and uh, students to to get around the online environment. How do you think that uh, uh, the the uh, um, case studies and know how from Eden can did contribute it to to your work and uh, the way how you can uh, help the educators in your country? Yes, I think it, it was for everyone. It's not only for us in our country, but I think for everyone who been part of the Eden community in the last years even, but more predominantly in the last eight months, it became quite evident that uh, being online and gathering all of this information through the webinars and not only the presentations and the speeches, but also what the community was sharing in chat and in questions like it's now, you know, people sharing... Uh, links and ideas and their experience, which is a very, um, what to say, valuable resource for everyone. So I think everybody gained, but probably quite a lot of us, it's not only the case of us here in Romania, but uh, a lot of others um, have done regional events or national events. From us, uh, we started uh, immediately, I mean, in, in April, also a series of webinars called Online Together in Romanian, Brauna Online, which uh, gather um, a huge momentum in Romania, but not only Romania, I gather the Romanian community across the globe, I can say that, because we had people participating from uh, Romanian, speaking on Romanians, because I always thought that at least in Europe and not necessarily everywhere, we need to focus also on sharing the knowledge and experience in other languages, not only in English. So people who are not so accustomed or they don't know the, the special language which we use sometimes on, on English for different uh, terms to be able to access the information and also to have a, a sort of national or regional perspective on it. We organize these webinars together jointly with Eden, with a lot of contribution of Eden, also by uh, delivering uh, and uh, sending uh, open badges which were uh, validated also by Eden and IEEE. So, and they were very, as you, Elisa also mentioned about the Eden badges, they were very much sought after. Even now I have people which are asking about those, uh, those badges during the webinars. And we are now at the uh, uh, webinar number 18, <laughs> which is, uh, I think, quite valuable and quite good. And also uh, through the training, we train more than 6,000 uh, professors from uh, the high schools and uh, different other universities in the last month with a lot of resources and information which was shared by Eden. And I encourage also the other participants to this and to the ICD or to USDL or to ODLA to, to share your information, your knowledge through uh, resources either on video sharing platform or on your website. So creating as much as possible open educational resources for other communities to, to include into their trainings or into their resource sharing uh, websites. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Uh, although I have a prepared question for Antonia, I see that we have a question uh, in chat uh, from Hannah Granger. She says, as Antonio says, gathering real-time evidence is hugely important. Eden has certainly contributed. Question if 
is if there is a bias to higher education, since growing interest and evidence from school education would be great to improve higher education, uh, uh, school uh, education evidence sharing. So what would be your comment, Antonio, here? Well, first of all, uh, let me just uh, also give a, a short reply to one of the questions in the Q&A, which was related to uh, the cost efficiency uh, of all of these initiatives. I think it's important to make a, a brief reference. In fact, and it was proven, for instance, with the research workshop, we were able to gather uh, a tremendous amount, uh, I mean, uh, a tremendous selection of, of um, experts from around the world uh, of uh, very high quality that it would be very difficult to actually have them uh, physically in, in, in if we had um, well, a traditional event. And this has happened also in terms of the online uh, initiatives that were conducted, well, the webinars the web, uh, that were organized by Eden and other organizations as well. So the amount of talent and expertise and uh, that was uh, able to be collected uh, and shared uh, in a very open and easy way with everyone from around the world has been uh, a tremendous experience. And it has a tremendous value. Um, well, in the case of, uh, of uh, our conference and um, the, 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 the webinars and all of this, they were done with um, no costs attached in terms of, the, uh, of inviting uh, experts. This uh, has to be noted as well. So all of the community from the highest expert to the to the just uh, um, uh, practitioner that is just starting out, everyone was sharing their experiences uh, openly and uh, in a very um, uh, how can how can I say um, in a very healthy way uh, and, and um, this generosity that was shown by everyone has to be uh, highlighted as well. R regarding your question, uh, the question that you've um, um, uh, just um, uh, uh, asked me, <laughs> Sandra, um, it is true. Uh, I think that Eden in this sense, and the other, other associations as well, but Eden has a very special place because it has uh, 30 years um, um, archive in a sense, of the, the, the best uh, research available in the field uh, uh, regarding these topics. And this has been widening in the last couple of months with uh, all these experiences that have been shared. I think that the collection of uh, uh, best practices or uh, practices um, by Eden uh, should be uh, a, 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 well, a target for us. Um, this, of course, uh, in uh, regarding association as Eden, this has not to do. Uh, this has not not to be done only focusing on higher education. It could and it should also uh, include the other uh, education sectors. Um, and one of the things that we also uh, have to note is the fact that this pandemic or the impact of the pandemic has brought a new interest and has developed a lot research on uh, distance and well and e-learning for younger kids there wasn't much research on this and now is there's there's uh, um, important research being conducted important um, expertise that is being gathered and can be shared and this represents an important aspect well if we'll, if we're, we're all happy with the fact that we've been able to develop a number of vaccines uh, in such a short notice, because well, there was a lot of investment. We also need to be to have investment in education, uh, but independently from the public fu funding investment, the community should invest on this. And there are simple things that we can do in order to upscale uh, the research and expertise. And of course, collecting evidences is a very important uh, aspect of this. Thank you, Antonio, for, for a very good answer. Uh, you have summarized uh, really good the important issues. And before uh, closing the session, let me just add that my experience is that at the moment we were faced in Croatia, for example, with uh, the pandemic and the crisis, uh, uh, 
my decision was that we were not going to do our own uh, webinar session that I would direct the higher education community to at Eden's webinars. And you have seen that in the results on the Eden uh, webinar series attendees that high number of creation uh, teachers has attended these webinars as and feeling uh, that they can go somewhere, find the information, collaborate with people. And uh, this was at that moment very crucial for them to, to be able to get uh, immediately some kind of support and reply to their numerous uh, questions. Um, I have last uh, question for each of you, and it was not prepared questions as, as some of them are. Uh, well, uh, in, in, in two sentences, uh, what would be uh, your um, thinking uh, the most important issue in education next year? Whether or not we manage to uh, get over the pandemic. Uh, so what would be the most important issue you think next year, which will be talked about? While you think about uh, this, I'll give you a minute or two. I will just uh, just uh, give some info that uh, at the beginning of this November, we had also another one uh, activities, and this was uh, Eden European Online and Distance Education Week. And here we show the full strength of the community collaborating uh, with uh, another uh, uh associations uh, like uh, United States Distance Learning Association, uh, like uh, Australian Association of uh, Distance Learning and Flexible Learning uh, uh, Associations of New Zealand, showing that we can go higher, that we can aim uh, wider uh, working on the global level. And I think that is very important that at this time we uh, collaborate, we communicate, and we share uh, among us uh, the best practices and know-how. And uh, I hope that uh, you will find Eden as association where you can get all this uh, information that are important to you. So let me back to uh, go back to my, uh, uh, my speakers, uh, my colleagues. Uh, so uh, I will start now here with Lisa. So what do you think, Lisa? I think that the biggest issue facing us will be two issues. One is the well-being and the support of our students and our learners. And the second would be finding a way to create designs for online and for the face-to-face -face classroom that can shift and transition back and forth. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Uh, Tim, what would be your quest answer? I think it's clear that we can't get the genie back in the bottle. I mean, we've uh, we've now got this uh, move to online. So the the big issue is how are we going to establish the equilibrium when we when we move forward from this, and uh, what role will the different actors and uh, students have in this process, and how can we move forward together? Great, Diana. I think I will pick up from where my colleagues have said, and maybe also from the question which was raised. And I will say that uh, in higher education, blended learning and digital education is was here for some time. Quite a lot of us were more, much more better prepared. But in the K-12 and in the high schools and gymnasium, that was the biggest shift. And I think the biggest challenge will be how to support, how to integrate digital education and blended learning at all levels, so even in rural areas, for uh, so to be able to have or to say a fair education and access to everyone uh, in the future. Uh, that's probably the biggest challenge, which at least in Europe we are going to face. Good. And Antonio, I give the last word to you. Well, uh, I will uh, agree with everyone else before, <laughs> uh, but also with that, because I had to add something. And you, you were not uh, fair with us because you've arranged uh, questions uh, that you didn't ask in the end. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, um, I would add that uh, a very important issue that we should tackle is, of course, uh, to have a more inclusive and, in, in that sense, a more uh, also a, uh, to a better quality learning experience, uh, learning, well, digital learning experience in the next year. So, I think that the bases are here, uh, as Tim has said, and also Lisa and Diana. Um, the genie will not get into the bottle again, so uh, what we have to move is forward, but we have to improve the quality 
of uh, what has been um, uh, what was be, is being delivered, and that that implies from improving the support to students, improving the support to teachers as well, to improve their um, their training as well, uh, and, and overall to be, uh, to have a better quality, and also more in, uh, also improve the equity of this experience to have it more inclusive, in order for uh, not to in, not to widen uh, the, the digital gap, but also but, uh, to do exactly the reverse. Thank you all. Yeah. We have some here comments in, in the chat. Uh, for example, Josefa said that online design is a paramount performance and 2021 is year of to support teachers, trainers and lecturers in how to upskill. So something we already mentioned uh, in our uh, answers. Uh, I see that uh, some say adding contributes to facilitating and fostering research and development in distance and e-learning. Thank you. We'll try to continue. And Mariam Kartashian says, for me, the biggest issue is the lack of equipment for distance learning in all parts of the world. How is it possible to find sponsors and support them? Well, uh, not an easy uh, question. I don't, I'm not certain that we have uh, answer to this one. Uh, is anyone would like to comment on this? Uh, if I can add something very quickly, in yeah. terms of also software, you need to look onto open source software. The open source software community has pulled up immensely in the last month and quite a lot of them are going out into the market. And in terms of equipment, there is also equipment quite cheaply now designed even with simple Raspberry Pis and so on which can easily support uh, people. And um, I think uh, the solutions are there and they're coming up together also for those which don't have so much uh, access to or possibilities to access very good quality equipment. And if I can add Sandra, one of the challenges which I was hoping that somebody else will pick up, I think it's going to be assessment and credentials, uh, which is also following from Antonio's quality, quality thing. I think we will need to focus much more, including in higher education, on how we validate our degrees when it's uh, partly online and with full blended learning, because in higher education and in traditional education system, we have no model of that in, in Europe, at least. And it's going to be one of the huge challenges for the policymakers in the future. So thank you. Thank you all. Uh, I'm going to conclude now uh, our session. Uh, thank you for all your contributions in chat. Uh, thank you today to my speaker for you uh, for being attending uh, this session. Uh, certainly, Eden will continue to work, uh, to share, to collaborate, and uh, uh, enable everyone to become a part of the community because I think today, especially today, it's important to be part of community of practices to, to be able to get information and to, to network and exchange experience and practice. And all our activities in the next year will definitely be shaped in a way to, to go in, in this way. And um, I just see that uh, my secretariat colleagues are saying that the next Eden session will be on, but it goes too much too, so quickly. Uh, on December 2nd, it will be an app webinar. Uh, so please follow us on our web pages. And this is at the end of our session, our contribution to ICD forum, which will be uh, in the next uh, two days. So thank you again and see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Stay safe, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.